bug world monsters are pitiless predators, merciless murderers. They're a force of nature that you don't want to encounter. In a bug battle, there is no such thing as gracious in defeat. The way that they end is always messy. The next bug you greet could be a great meal or the Grim Reaper. When a leafcutter ant soldier engages a speckled house spider, it's power versus patience. In the depths of an equatorial jungle, a million-strong colony of leafcutter ants is busy farming the rainforest. Each worker focused on the production of fungus. Leafcutter ants are really the farmers of the animal world. They cut vegetation that they then grow fungus on. So the ants actually live off of the fungus, not the plants. They might be peaceful, but you aggravate these agrarian ants at your peril. At the first sign of trouble, you find yourself face to face with a leaf cutter soldier. There's got to be constant guarding of the colony so that they don't get attacked, both foraging lines and the colony itself. You don't mess with a leaf cutter ant soldier. These hulking warrior ants dwarf the workers. Their bodies are protected by tough armor. The massive bulbous head support some of the ant world's most fearsome weapons. Strong, hardened mandibles, powerful enough to pierce human skin, crush and slice. Look at those mandibles. They really act like chainsaws. If you want a leaf cut up, you call a worker. If you want another animal cut up, you call the soldier. A party of invading trap jaw ants has ventured too far into leafcutter territory. Workers alert the troops. Leafcutter ants make a surprising diversity of sounds and vibrations that they use to communicate among themselves by rubbing various body parts together. Dispatched to deal with the interlopers, the leafcutter soldier launches a withering attack. Its enormous mandibles clamp down. Although the soldier is wiggling its abdomen around, it doesn't have formic acid, it doesn't have a sting. However, its mandibles are so strong that it's literally able to take control of the situation. Ordinarily, trap jaws are ferocious fighters, but against the soldiers, they don't stand a chance. One by one, intruders are systematically torn apart. As you can see, cutting this trap giant in half was no more trouble than the workers cutting leaves in half. Trap jaw body parts litter the leaves. It's an awesome display of brute strength and single-minded savagery. But not every fighter in this neck of the woods relies on size and raw power. Small and delicate 
The speckled house spider seems like an unlikely serial killer. You might think that something called a house spider isn't up to the task of surviving in a forest full of dangerous creatures. But let me tell you, this spider is more than capable of surviving encounters that would send others home in tears. This relative of the Black Widow and Redback is built for a life on the web. Her long, spindly legs are agile enough to navigate her silken web like a tightrope walker. The speckled house spider is a sit-and-wait predator, happy just to hang it home and let her untidy web do all the work. It might look like the result of lousy housekeeping, but that chaotic tangle of lines is actually a very effective way of catching prey. It's extremely strong and also laced with lots of globules of liquid silk, so that anything that ventures onto the web or even brushes a single trip line can quickly find itself entangled and in a fight for its life. Before her next hunt begins, she decides to change for dinner. Slipping out of her skin into something more comfortable. The spider's hardened outer skin is literally an external skeleton. And because it doesn't stretch while she grows, she may shed it five to seven times throughout her life. This process is called ecotheseism. In a lot of ways, it's almost like a rebirth. However, it leaves the spider in a temporarily vulnerable and defenseless position. It will take a while for her new skin to harden. But the speckled house spider had better be ready. The leafcutter ant soldier, fresh from its victory over the trapjaw ant, is on its way. What happens when the mighty warrior and the silky assassin get caught in a web of intrigue? Granted, she's probably not going to be in a hurry to get too close, but if he stumbles onto her web, he's going to be in for a rude shock. Next, a lethal leaf cutter versus the speckled assassin. Then, two gymnasts go for the jugular. And later, brute force collides head on with a delicate destroyer. Leafcutter ant soldier, alone on patrol, is just inches away from a speckled house spider's silken trap. One false step, and there will be war. The leafcutter ant soldier has size and strength, with powerful mandibles to cut and crush. The speckled house spider uses silk and venom to overcome the enemy. Which strategy will prevail? The leafcutter soldier suddenly finds itself in a sticky situation. We already know that this soldier can cut an opponent in two. But when she's gotten caught in this web, she's really on shaky ground. The speckled house spider doesn't move. With an intruder this large and dangerous, She's happy to play the waiting game. The ant tries to chew through its bonds, but succeeds only in becoming more entangled. Finally, choosing her moment, the spider descends and starts throwing thread. Whatever she does, the house spider must avoid those jaws. One snip could open her up like a bursting water balloon. Then, moving in cautiously, she delivers a toxic kiss, narrowly avoiding the ant's slashing jaws.
But this battle isn't over. Prey this large will need more than one dose. Again and again, the spider dances with death. Ducking the gnashing mandibles to inject more venom. She retreats and waits again. Killing time while her potent chemical cocktail finishes off this soldier of misfortune. In a monster bug war, no matter how formidable your weapons, it pays to fight battles on your home turf. You know, I think this is just a classic case of the bigger they are, the harder they fall. End of story. When two jumping spiders go head to head, it's a case of look before you leap. The steamy jungles of Central America are home to more than 5,000 species of jumping spider, each one more striking than the last. The yellow jumping spider might not be quite as colorful as some of her cousins, but she makes up for it with street smarts. They've got relatively simple brains, but they're clearly using these brains in really complicated ways to remember where things are and make quite complicated decisions about how to attack their prey. The huge comic book eyes are constantly peeled for prey they can see 40 body lengths away. And don't think for a second that you can sneak past unnoticed. She really does have eyes in the back of her head. A total of eight orbs ring the head, providing a wide-angled world view. The smaller eyes focus on movement, so they detect something moving in front of them. It's the big anterior median eyes that provide the crucial information for where and when to attack. Those extraordinary orbs sense color, contrast, even ultraviolet light. Just what you need when pinpointing prey and launching long-range attacks. Death comes swiftly. Fast-acting venom paralyzes the victim almost instantly. But what happens when she encounters an enemy who possesses the same skills? The tiger jumping spider has also earned her stripes as a pouncing predator. She's a polyphagous predator, which means she'll kill and eat pretty much any creature that she can. But some jumping spiders actually prefer spiders over insects, including spiders just like themselves. Squat and compact, the tiger has the perfect build for long-distance leaping, jumping up to 20 body lengths in a single bound on hydraulic legs. Now that's deadly accuracy, a direct hit. You could almost hear her making the calculations for the trajectory of that jump. And she took her time to make sure she got it right. Brava. But the kill might not be quite so easy when the tiger jumping spider runs into her yellow counterpart. You might as well just flip a coin or pick the spider you like the look of most. It's that close a call. They're similar in size and possess identical powers. 
which one will get the jump on the other. Next, two lethal leapers face off. Then, a multi-clawed killer goes on the attack. And later, mortal combat in the treetops. On a rainforest leaf, two jungle gymnasts are about to meet in mortal combat. A yellow jumping spider is prowling for prey. Nearby, a tiger jumping spider will happily make a meal of her close relation. Both have incredible eyesight, extraordinary jumping ability, and potent venom. Which one is the faster draw? The combatants eyeball each other. If spiders could break out in a nervous sweat, they would both be doing it about now. Because they can both see and recognize the danger that they're both facing. The yellow jumping spider holds her ground. The tiger blinks first, backing off, but changes her mind. They attack and counterattack. It's a standoff. The tiger makes a strategic withdrawal. The yellow jumping spider is on full alert. But the tiger has a new vantage point. It's all about establishing the best angle of attack and getting in an accurate shot first. Like its feline namesake, the tiger pounces. Injecting lethal venom. For these spiders, the old saying, look before you leap, really sums it all up. In this particular case, the tiger jumping spider had the best view and the best trajectory, and that proved to be the decisive advantage. Like any tiger in the wild, feeding isn't about dining etiquette. She vomits digestive enzymes into her victim and slurps up the liquidized flesh. leaving the yellow jumping spider very deflated. So much for the sisterhood. When a geophilid centipede grapples with a Costa Rican cellar spider, it's silky skills versus straight out savagery. The rainforests of Central America are rife with skilled killers. But when it comes to speed and aggression, the geophilid centipede is in a class of its own. If you shrunk a freight train down to just a few inches and gave it 152 legs and a hyperactive and aggressive attitude and a pair of venom claws, you would end up with a geophilid centipede. The only thing guaranteed to slow this guy down is death. Swift and sure-footed, as flexible as a yoga master, this restless hunter can handle not just rough terrain, but in some cases, no terrain. Flowing across crevices like its own rope bridge on 76 pairs of legs. Each body segment is protected top and bottom by armored plates 
At the rear, a pair of anal legs mimics the centipede's antennae, so predators aren't sure which is the dangerous end. When it tracks down prey, those legs become multiple weapons of war. The instant he makes contact with the prey, he wraps as many legs around it as he can and just ties it up. Each one of these legs is tipped with a very sharp claw, so this is like trying to wrestle a snake that's inside of a barbed wire suit. With the victim pinned, the centipede puts its venom claws to work, injecting a lethal chemical brew. Most centipede venoms contain a chemical called 5-hydroxytryptamine, which is the neurotransmitter that we call serotonin. This not only produces pain in the prey, but also increases the absorption of other toxins that break down the cell walls in the tissue. What the venom doesn't do, the vicious claws finish off. The centipede starts tunneling through the katydid and devours its victim from the inside, right up to the eyeball. All that's left is a shell, discarded like an empty glove. Nearby, another ruthless hunter is setting her trap. Looking delicate, even frail, the Costa Rican cellar spider is deceptively deadly. Cellar spiders look so delicate, but actually, they're really quite tough predators. For this web warrior, being neat isn't a high priority. The cellar spiders build a fairly messy web. They hang upside down in this web, and then they may have lines going down to the ground that are relatively sticky. When a bug blunders into her gossamer curtain, those extra long, thin legs start throwing silk thread in a rapid fire frenzy of wrapping. When the cellar spider wraps its prey, it isn't putting out big swaths of silk the way some of the other spiders do. They're essentially just putting out a single line, but they do it extraordinarily fast, and so they can really wrap up and do it fast. But the female cellar spider is about to receive another visitor. The geophilid centipede is on its way. What happens when the silk stalker is struck by a runaway train? Anyone who thinks cellar spiders are harmless doesn't know they're spiders. The centipede could be hogtied in an instant, and then the only way he could break free would be brute force. Next, the fragile and the fearless face off. Then, a David and Goliath battle to the death. And later, armed warriors go to war. In a Central American rainforest, a hungry Costa Rican cellar spider is desperate to feed. A geophilid centipede is a potential smorgasbord, but it could also make a meal of her. The cellar spider smothers her enemy with silk before delivering a venomous bite. The geophilid centipede uses claw-tipped legs to grip its foe, and venom claws to inject a toxic chemical cocktail. With customary bravado, 
the centipede hurtles onto the web. That many feet, the odds of getting tangled up are enormous. If he doesn't break free quickly, the web owner will come down and scope him out. The cellar spider reacts instantly, lassoing the intruder with strand after strand of sticky silk. The first thing the centipede would normally do when being overwhelmed by a threat is head for the nearest crevice at high speed. But that's clearly impossible to do when you're being wound up with thread after thread of super sticky spider silk. The trapped centipede lashes about like a demented garden hose, trying to score a direct hit with its deadly venom claws. But the spider is always just out of range. This is where silk wrapping with these incredibly long legs comes in handy. She cannot get too close to that centipede. The way she is wrapping is amazing. Look at how fast this is. The cellar spider goes into overdrive. Her legs are a blur as she throws silk at a rate of six loops per second. But the centipede is just as quick to break the ties that bind. This is an epic fight back. If he can get those venom claws into the spider, just one bite would be enough to turn this fight upside down. The spider sneaks in several bites, but her venom is relatively weak and slow acting. But eventually, with her victim's head pinned and its body twisted like a pretzel, the spider seems to have won. But like a horror movie monster, the centipede suddenly breaks free once more. This is amazingly risky business with the centipede getting its head free all the time. She's putting out an enormous amount of silk. At some point, she's going to run out of the silk that she has available. Her silk stores are used up. The spider is throwing thin air, and the centipede's head is still free. In desperation, she dispenses her few remaining drops of venom. The centipede may have finally succumbed, but talk about combat endurance. He made the spider use every last inch of its silk, every last drop of its venom, and every last bit of its energy. He won't be remembered as a wimp. It's been an epic battle. Now, the epic feast. The cellar spider spews digestive juices into the centipede's body and sucks up the liquefied flesh. OK, I know it's dead, but I wouldn't be surprised to see this centipede spring back into action one last time. When an orange mouth tarantula and a scarlet mouth Katie did cross paths, neither plays nice. With her velvet coat and fancy gloves, the tree dwelling orange mouth tarantula is no stranger to the high life. But despite being an uptown girl, she has a low-down mean streak. They are absolutely voracious predators. These guys are taking down frogs and lizards with no problem. Behind her pedipalps, huge fangs like ice picks are as brutal as any in the spider world. At the tips of her forelegs, dense tufts of hairs form pads known as scopulae, enabling her to scale sheer surfaces with ease. Basically, they're ambush predators. They're sitting still, waiting till something comes close, and then they just zip out and grab it, put the chelicera into it, and just pump their prey full of venom. But the orange-mouthed tarantula isn't the only one 
looking for easy conquests. The Scarlet Mouth Katie did has a ruthless agenda of her own. Delicate legs that can leap or lacerate. And a painted mouth with the power to pulverize. Clearly signal this Katie did's murderous intent. She'll eat the flesh of any downed animal. They can be quite savage. Powerful mandibles quickly dismantle this grasshopper. Tearing off limbs like petals. She's an expert at locating takeout dinners. Long antennae act like portable radar to help size up her prospects. Muscular legs lined with spines can lash out to puncture prey or skip town completely. She can use them to propel herself into the air in a very athletic manner. One push and she's airborne in a flash. The Katie Did's powerful legs help her get to the front of the dinner line fast. But when she lands a meeting, with the orange mouth tarantula, who will get the upper hand and who will lose their head? Next, a David and Goliath duel to the death. Then, two tribes wage war. In the Costa Rican jungle, an orange mouthed tarantula is a social climber with a serious appetite. Not far away, a scarlet mouthed Katie did boast more than looks that kill. When these mortal rivals clash, good manners go out the window. The orange-mouthed tarantula's venomous fangs tear victims apart. The scarlet-mouthed Katie did fights back with vicious mandibles. Which one will live to see another day? From neighboring branches, the Katie did and the tarantula size each other up. The Katie did launches. But Close Up finds itself next to a giant. The Katie Dead tries to escape, but fatally underestimates the tarantula's speed. Monster fangs slam into the Katie Dead's body. This tarantula's bite has caused a ridiculous amount of damage very, very fast. Spiked daggers rake through soft flesh as the Katie did kicks impotently. She's just grinding away with these tooth chelicera and basically turning this Katie did into soup. Death by tarantula is not a nice way to go. The Katie did isn't going without a fight. But she's locked in a spider death hold. The orange mouth tarantula puts the fight beyond doubt. And she gets an unexpected bonus a side serving of the Katie Did's unborn babies. And if that weren't undignified enough, she silk wraps the scarlet mouth, so her meal stays in one piece while she slurps it down. Really, 
Who would want to be a bug? Their lives are so full of peril, and the way that they end is always messy. When dinosaur ants take on a trap jaw ant colony, heads will roll. A rainforest log has become a new home to a small colony of dinosaur ants. What they lack in numbers, they make up in attitude and stature. Dinosaur ants are really huge ants. They're some of the biggest ants in the world. They're somewhere between an inch to an inch and a half in size. Those dinosaur-sized mandibles are just as adept at fetching and carrying nectar droplets as they are at gripping, stripping, and shredding their prey. If those mandibles weren't fearsome enough, under the abdomen, a deadly stinger packs a fatal punch. A katydid unwisely ventures into the neighborhood. In dinosaur territory, trespassers aren't prosecuted. They're dismembered. When they capture small prey, they may just grab it with the mandibles, cut it in two, and carry it back to the colony. These ruthless raiders will protect their colony against all comers. They may need to. A few feet below, a colony of trapjaw ants moves in. Construction of a new nest is underway. Prolific workers, strong in numbers, trap jaw ants run a ruthlessly efficient killing machine. A passing spider is carved up and carted off to feed the colony's hungry larvae. These trap jaws are proficient builders one minute, brutal butchers the next. Lightning-quick jaws on a hair trigger spring shut with an acceleration a hundred thousand times the force of gravity. We're talking fully open to fully closed in 0.13 of a millisecond, which means they're traveling at about 145 miles an hour. They're not the only weapon. Needle-sharp stingers loaded with toxic venom bring down most competitors. The sting is also very deadly, and they can use it over and over again. So they can sting, back off, sting, back off, and keep doing this over and over until the prey or the enemy just kills over dead. The trap jaws are the neighbors from hell, and the dinosaur ants want them gone. Before the day's end, there will be war. Next, a vicious encounter on the rainforest floor. <laughs> on a Costa Rican jungle floor, Enterprising trap jaw ants are intent on building a new home. Up above, resident dinosaur ants resent the intruders. They're about to declare war. With their dominant size and vicious bite, dinosaur ants break competitors with ease. But the team spirit and cutthroat tactics of the trap jaws could overcome their enemy. Both of the ant species are very capable fighters, and they're both armed to the hilt. No matter what happens, there's going to be mass casualties, and it's anyone's guess who will back down first. 
A dinosaur ant scout scopes out the enemy. It's intercepted by a forward party of biting trapjaw ants. But the dinosaur's sheer size and huge mandibles win this skirmish. Dinosaur ant reinforcements arrive. It's clear that they've decided that offense is the best strategy in this situation. They might end up regretting it, but the battle is on. Angry trap jaws swarm the newcomers, hacking and spearing. As the meltdown continues, each side attempts to gain the upper hand. But it soon becomes clear the trap jaws have far superior strategies. Every time an ant is killed or injured, a distinct chemical signal goes off. And it seems that the trap jaw ants are better at responding in mass, so that might just tilt the battle in their favor. The conflict escalates. And the corpses pile up in both camps. But the trap jaws have the numbers. These battles between neighboring colonies can go on for well over half an hour. And usually, one group is able to establish dominance over the other and the losers back off and move away. The dinosaur ants have suffered too many casualties. They're a small colony. To fight on would be fruitless. The dinosaur ants retreat to their log to lick their wounds. And in the ceasefire, the trap jaws turn their weapons of war back into tools of the trade and resume their building. The neighbors from hell are here to stay. In a monster bug war, the Grim Reaper is never far off. One lapse and your life could be over. A hasty decision can mean lingering death. And one wrong move means one foot in the grave. On a bug battleground, you conquer your foes or stare death in the face.